Hi everyone, Holly from Safe for Kids here again and I'm doing a series of 10 videos based on protective education and in this video we're going to be talking about the importance of children knowing the correct anatomical names for their body parts. So we teach public and private as a whole concept and I use sign language when I'm working with all children so the sign for public is like this and the sign for private is flat hand, turn the key because your mouth is a private part and sometimes what you say can be private. So I've actually made it, I've broken it down in a, another video and I'll share the video link um, in the notes. But teaching public and private as a whole concept is a lot easier for children to comprehend and to be honest there's a lot less giggling when I'm teaching it to children in class. So when I'm teaching them I sit the kids down on the floor and I say we're going to be saying some words that we don't normally say because school is a public place but these are private things. So for learning today, we're going to use these words, but once you go outside or out that door, you're not going to be saying these words out in the playground. I also say we're going to try not to giggle. We giggle because we're embarrassed, and I'll ask them, what's this, or what's this? And hopefully they'll name it right, and they don't giggle. So what we're trying to do is desensitize them. So we go through... Um, public and private rooms and places so we go through bedrooms bathrooms and toilets a private room so we talk about what the private things that you might do in them when i'm teaching classes of children i teach them that when mum goes to the toilet and shuts the door leave her alone she's doing something private she doesn't want to talk with you um, so i also say to them about because i'm in a classroom would it be okay for me to sit here and start picking my nose and the kids go oh no that's gross that's disgusting and they're right but if all the children are left and I start to pick my nose, would it be okay? And the kids go, I guess so. So that just teaches them that anywhere is private if you're there by yourself. So then we go on and do public and uh, things that we do with our body that's public or private. So with all the private things, we might name burping and farting and nose picking and spitting and swearing. I teach kids you don't swear at school because it's a public place. I can't control what kids do at home. But if I hear kids swearing at school, I just remind them, hey, is this a public place or a private place? Um, here, when I'm working with children, this is where I also talk to them about pornography. Now, pornography is such a huge issue that I'm going to do the next video after this one is going to be solely on pornography. Um, but I don't call it pornography with children in primary school. I call them private pictures or private movies. So it fits perfectly in with this lesson. Then we go on to clothing and we brainstorm, you know, knickers and jocks and bras and things like that. And then we finally get on to body parts. So I teach children that your private parts are those parts of your body that are covered by your bathers plus your mouth. So I brainstorm with them and I start usually start with boys and I teach children that boys have four private parts. So we go through and now I call them either home names or street names. We need to get away from this being your rude parts because with rude comes shame. No, they're just your private parts. They're your special parts and nobody should touch them. You shouldn't touch anybody else's. If you do, that's against the law. No one's allowed to show you private pictures. No one's allowed to take private pictures of you and you're not allowed to take private pictures of yourself. Because according to the Federal Police, children as young as four are getting their iPads and taking naked pictures of themselves. So I've actually... Um, in the book over there someone should have told me I've covered all, off on all of those um, things and in fact all of the books that I have um, cover pretty much the whole program that I've gone through so um, I'll share the, the link to the book bundle um, in this video series but then we finally get on to naming them. So, you know, we'll get, I'll get Willie and Cock and Doodle and Tally Whacker and just recently had a little boy say, my grandmother calls it a cuckoo bird. And then I just had this picture of the cuckoo bird going in the cuckoo house and that's not okay because kids will be beaten up. Don't do that. So mouth, testicles, penis and your bottom. And then we start with girls um, and with mouth, breast, uh, bottom and then we get to the front parts. Now, over the years, I've heard girls' front parts being called a lily, a flower, a mini, a mickey, a nelly, a tweety, a frou-frou, a frangipani, a froggy. The latest thing kids here in Perth are calling it as a cookie. Apparently, if a child goes and says something, you know, to their teacher, the boy next door touched my cookie, the teacher might go, oh, um, you know, that's, don't be mean and share it around. So we need them to know that it's um, so... With children, we teach them, with 
girls the, um, vulva and vagina so I hope this is helpful just knowing the correct anatomical names for private body parts is a protective factor it's not sex education but they really do, do need to, to know the words and if children are from other nationalities um, you know and they, they try and disclose to their teacher and they use another word, the teacher isn't going to understand. So we need them to use, uh, to know the anatomical names in English. So um, I hope that helps and I'll see you in the next video.